That's right, everybody. Magical Melody is back, baby. This video will cover days 101 to 200. So, if you want to see the first 100 days, make sure to check out my first video, which will be linked in the description. The goal for this series is to get all 100 music notes, whilst completing some side quests along the way, like getting max affection with every villager, and getting as close to a perfect playthrough as I can. I don't know if I'll achieve that in this video, but I'll just have to make another 100 days if I don't, which I don't think you guys would mind. Before we start, this video is sponsored by me. That's right, just me. A video like this takes a lot of time and effort, and I would super appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed to my channel. It lets me know that you want to see more content like this, and it really helps me out. Now enough talking and advertising, let's get into another 100 days of Harvest Moon Magical Melody. We pick up our journey on day 101, where we say hello to Reginald and Kevin and collect our tools. First things first, we purchase some lumber and pay 5,000 G to renovate our house to level 3. We check in all the barn animals, make sure the chickens are fed, and then run around town talking to villagers with at least three hearts to get our first music note of these 100 days, the popular note, for receiving five cakes on the Thanksgiving festival. We then give Tim a cake and spend the evening in the mines. On day 102, our house has finished being remodeled by the construction bros. With that, we can buy a whole bunch of new furniture. Then we move our house to the actual place it needs to go and buy some of that new furniture. Of course, we feed our large animals, do some interior remodeling, go over to the junk shop to buy more furniture, and do even more remodeling. Now our house looks amazing. We give Bob a gift down at the bar, and finish the day with more work in the mines. On the morning of day 103, Theodore wakes us up and takes us over to the mountain, and asks us to climb all the way up to get the blue feather. We do it easy peasy, because we're just built differently, and arrive at the top, happy and tired, and we're rewarded with the blue feather. We travel all the way back down and are once again rewarded with another music note, the bluebird note. Back on the farm, we're adding some fencing to our ranch house and we get a letter from Kurt telling us that winter is a great time for gathering resources. So we head on down to floor 100 of the mines and start tilling for some coins until we get another music note, the lucky note for finding 1000G under the ground. We finish the day by playing whack-a-mole. Carl wakes us up on day 104 as he finally returned from his vacation. We go down to his cafe and get a cutscene introducing us to his establishment and another bachelorette, Katie. I decided we need a quicker method of getting water in the main field, so I end the day by buying a well and hit the hay. We start day 105 in the chicken coop, making sure our birds are happy and fed, and then we give Katie one of the many eggs we will give her throughout these 100 days. We're running low on fodder, so I buy some from Hank, and then head on down to Liz's store to finally buy fertilizer. Lila's store sells some colored yarn, so we buy some of that, ship it, and get another music note, the dying note. You're dying. Tim sends us a letter to let us know that there's a cave that we can only go to in the winter, but we don't listen to him and finish the day in the spring cave, looking for Ord's gift away. The construction bros are back at our house on day 106, as our new well has finally been installed. We get a letter from Bob letting us know that he had W Riz as a kid, but he's lost his touch. We give him some silver ore to make him feel better. We make sure to milk Lem and head over to the lake cave and do some rare gem spelunking. We finish the day by shipping off our spoils in the chicken coop. Gwen is at our door on the morning of day 107 and gives us a delicious pizza slice. We check on the chickens and then return the favor by giving Gwen an egg from today's harvest. Then it's back to the mines, looking for more ores to gift away. Yet again, we end the day by shipping off our leftover ores and gems. We begin day 108 by checking out what festivals are coming up, then feeding our chickens. Of course, we feed our cows and sheep as well. Then we head over to the beach to do some unsuccessful clam farming. After all that failure, we need a stamina increase. Then we do some diamond mining on floor 50 of the lake mine, before finishing the day at the fire festival, where we just chill next to the fire with Ellen. Our relaxation is rewarded with another music note, the flame note. Day 109 begins in the mailbox, as Gina sends us a letter to warn us about being outside in the cold and getting sick. Martha also sends us a letter mentioning the same exact thing. We purchase the silver hammer and hoe from the junk shop, and do some more gem mining and shipping to finish the day. 
Day 110 begins in the barn as we feed our large animals. I've been neglecting Blue so he gets an egg and Bob gets his silver ore. There isn't much to do in the winter so I go back down to the mines and goof off with the paralysis gas before shipping off the spoils of our spelunking. Eve is at our door the morning of day 111 to give us some juice. We ship some eggs, give Dia some coral, and head back down to floor 50 of the lake mine to do some diamond farming. We end the day by shipping off our haul of diamonds to the highest bidder. Dia wakes us up the morning of day 112 with a gift of blueberries and a music note, the princess note. We give Lem a nice brush and milking and teach a mole a few things before giving Louis a rare ore, which he loves. We cuddle a monkey and then go searching for ores in the cave, which we organize in our brand new large storage thingy. On day 113, Ellen is at our house and asks us to join her in stargazing this evening. Of course, we accept and start our day in earnest in the chicken coop. Of course, it wouldn't be a winter day without doing some mining in the lake cave. And we finish our day waiting in the square for Ellen. She eventually arrives and we head on up to the viewing balcony to watch the stars. Day 114 begins in the barn as our animals need food to survive. Probably didn't know that. Speaking of food, our animals are running out, so we go and purchase more at the Blue Sky Ranch. I then fail a couple times at whacking a mole before finally getting it right. Then we finish the day in the mines. We're back in the barn on day 115, getting some shiny wool from our friend Cactus, which I definitely should have turned into yarn. We give Anne a rare ore, since that's one of her favorite gifts. And we spend some time in the mines before ending our day by cuddling a weasel outside the frozen lake. Sharpie is ready for her first haircut on day 116. Ooh, I like a cut, G. Following that, we give Anne her final present as she has finally made it to 10 hearts. And we finish this short and boring day by doing even more mining. It's day 117 and we're back in the chicken coop getting our affection up with our birds. Speaking of affection, Gwen gets a delicious egg and then it's straight back into the mines. We spend the evening cleaning up our stone fencing around the ranch house to make moving around much easier. Day 118, and the animals are looking very, very happy today. Alex is also very happy with receiving a poisonous mushroom, and Carl loves the egg that I give him. I'm tired of jumping over rocks, so I clear a path on the ranch to make it easier to run to the mines. And speaking of mines, we spend the rest of our day looking for diamonds and rare jewels in the lake mine. Of course, we gotta ship those off to make some easy cash. Day 119, and the final day of the year, begins with taking care of Reginald and Kevin. The Harvest Sprites knock on our door and ask us who the lucky lady we're taking for the first sunrise of the year is, and we select Gwen, cause, you know, why not? We take care of the animals, do some final mining in the lake cave, and then do our last ship of the year before meeting up with Gwen in the town square. We trot on down to the viewing balcony and watch the sun come up. We leave a very happy boy with love on the brain, apparently. When we get home, we're rewarded with our final note of the year, the New Year's Sunrise Note. Day 120, the first day of year two, and the first day of spring, begins with Katie at her door giving us some jam and another music note, the waitress note. Maria sent us a letter saying there's new books in the library, which we've probably already read. So we start year two in the barn, taking care of our animals. We till out the land that will be used for our farming and then spread some fertilizer to get high quality crops when they're ready for harvest. All the work has depleted our stamina, so we get a refresh from the goddess and then get back to more planting and tilling, then finally planting some crops. We head over to the kitchen and make some very berry jam, and then it's back to the fields. Of course, we need to head on down to the New Year's festival, and we're rewarded for socializing with another music note, the Spring Footsteps note. The evening is spent fixing up the crop squares with a rock and spreading even more fertilizer. We start day 121 with a surprise, as the town rabbit has finally become friends with us. We also get another music note, the wild note. We water our crops for the first time this video. You're gonna be seeing a lot of that and then head down to the coop to collect the eggs and take care of the chickens. Now that we won't be mining as much, we head over to Ty's workshop and upgrade our hammer to gold, give Gwen that jam that we made last night, and then head on down to Liz's store to pick up some spring seeds. We sow and water all these new crops and then decide that we need some fruit in our diet. So we purchase some fruit tree seeds from Liz. We clear all the tile land at the river plot and then plant our orange tree seed and we are rewarded with another music note the forest note. 
Ronald is at our door the morning of day 122 since he knows that we planted some fruit seeds the other day. Nina wrote us a very nice letter telling us that she's waiting for us, and Ty sent us a letter telling us he can now create accessories. In the interest of symmetry, I decide to purchase another well symmetry. and then plot out some squares on the Riverland. We give Carl some delicious special milk, which he loves, then sow some seeds in the newly tilled river squares. We finish the day by planting the apple tree and grape tree before making some berry berry jam in the kitchen. Day 123 begins in the coop as we collect a special egg and do some weeding around the ranch farm. I learned Carl loves eggs, so I give him that special milk for nothing. We finish the day by doing some moonstone hunting in an effort to get Basil back in town and upgrade the junk shop. It's day 124 and the construction bros finished our new well. We water all our crops, check on our large animals, and decide that we need more room. So we purchase the big barn upgrade. We make some more jam, give it to Gwen, and then finish the day doing more moonstone hunting. It seems like the construction bros worked through the wee hours of the morning on day 125 to finish our barn upgrade. Thanks guys. We start the day by feeding the chickens and giving Blue a good egg, cause he's a good egg. Our turnips are ready for harvest, so we collect those and kill some weeds before replanting. We spend the evening collecting honey, stones, and herbs in the mountains. Carl wakes us up on day 126 with a gift of pudding and another music note, the patissier note for getting him up to three hearts. Of course, we water our crops and take care of our animals. We give Joe a turnip, which he loves, and give Blue an egg, which gets him up to max affection. We're running low on fodder and chicken feed, so we stock up at the Blue Sky Ranch and then spend the evening clam farming down at the beach. We finish our day by collecting some breadfruits, our first harvest of the year. Lewis gives us a silver ore on day 127, along with another music note, the Shy Guy note. Today is the egg festival, so we can spend our time watering crops, taking care of our animals, and harvesting cabbages and replanting instead of handing out gifts. We head on down to the town square and do some socializing before finishing the day by selling our first crop of breadfruits. Day 128 begins in the chicken coop as we got to make sure they stay healthy. We say hello to the large animals in the barn and then purchase even more seeds to plant. Our potatoes and turnips are ready for harvest, so we spend the evening plucking those starchy boys from the ground and replanting. We got some letters on day 129. Alex appears to have some love sickness, and the Blue Sky Ranch is just doing some advertising. We give Cactus a nice little shear and discover a cute little frog in the town square. Gwen gets a cabbage, and we get a nice stamina boost. We finish the day by doing some more moonstone farming in the mines, then selling off our extra crops for some good money. We have back-to-back -back days of rain on day 130, so we can spend the time we would spend watering in the barn getting some milk from Lem and wool from Sharpie. We sell off that wool and get another music note, the shearing note, for selling 10 things of wool. We give Bob a final silver ore, as this is the last gift he needs to get up to max affection. We replant some crops, do some moonstone farming, and then finish the day by giving Hank a turnip. Unfortunately, we don't get three days of rain on day 131, so we need to water by hand. We run down to the river house to check out the upcoming events and then decide to buy a new calf. I streamed this day on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jack.goose by the way, and my chat decided that Fidget Spin would be the perfect name for this calf. Perfect, everything, down to the last minute details. We also decided to get a new lamb and once again, Twitch chat had an amazing suggestion, Lego, left parentheses, all cap, right parentheses. We give Eve a delicious mushroom and then decide to expand our real estate empire by purchasing one sea breeze, flower bud point, three mountain echo forest, two mountain echo forest, and four three flower bud, all to get one music note, the owner of mother earth note. We finish the day by collecting and selling a whole bunch of breadfruits to make up for spending 34,000 G today. We're back in the fields doing some watering on day 132. We head over to the coop and take care of our chickens before checking up on our two newest barn friends. We provide Gwen with her daily cabbage and give Theodore his last potato, as he now has 10 out of 10 hearts. We decide to take a trip to the secret island before realizing we didn't bring our fishing rod with us, so we just have to head right back. While doing some evening exploring, we stumble upon a cutscene introducing us to Henry, a very important villager to befriend if you want to get all 100 notes. 
He's a traveling artist who likes carrots, and that's about it. There's not much else you need to know about him. We finished the day by selling off those breadfruits that we collected. Katie is once again waking us up on day 133 with a gift of cake, which we give right back to her. We give Tim a bronze ore and Alex a poisonous mushroom before heading over to the goddess pond to get a re-up on our stamina. We gift Gwen some very berry jam, head on down to the mines, then finish the day by collecting some cabbages. Cabbages? What kind of slum do you think this is? The morning of day 134 is spent running around the mountains looking for herbs and food to wake us up since we stayed up so late yesterday. We take care of our chickens, give out some gifts, order some more chicken feed, and then sell off some cabbages as we finally get to 50. This means that we can buy some strawberry seeds from Liz's store tomorrow. Lila is at our door the morning of day 135 to give us some wool and another note, the heartfelt note. We give Fidget Spin and Lego left parentheses all cap right parentheses a brush before purchasing our first packs of strawberry seeds. Strawberry seeds are super expensive and they're only available after selling 50 cabbages. They are one of the best items in the game for gift giving as almost half the villagers in this town love them. Of course, we get those planted before ending the day by collecting even more breadfruits. It's day 136 and we've got even more cabbages ready for harvest. We give cactus a trim and use the yarn maker for the first time. And then we head on down to the town square for the spring horse festival. We enter Kuze in the hardest race since he has 10 out of 10 hearts. We get a good start and move into the lead ahead of Bob. We get a quick onion boost and just as Kuze is about to run out of steam, we get two Pontata root boosts in a row. Unfortunately for us, Bob's horse picked up some carrot speed boosts and takes the checkered flag just before us. We drown our sorrows down by the beach by doing some clam farming. And we finish off the day by selling one of the clams we found, which finishes off the food shipped items list. We begin day 137 by checking out the calendar for future festivals before heading over to the ranch to feed the chickens and barn animals. We start working on affection with Duke by giving him a potato and then finish this very short day by shipping off some breadfruits. We get a letter from Carl on day 138, letting us know that his sad cakes are bittersweet. We water our strawberries and brush all our animals before giving Katie a delicious breadfruit from our reserves. We then hit the mines to do a couple of paralysis spins. These are just so much fun. On day 139, we decide to liven up the ranch a little bit by purchasing a windmill. We then drop some cash on a whole bunch of new furniture from Woody's shop and the junk shop, then finish another short day by shipping off even more breadfruits. Joe wakes us up on day 140 with a gift of pocket fish and a music note, the social craftsman note. Dia sent us a letter encouraging us to work hard towards our goal, which, you know, we're all about that grind set, baby. Also, Joe sent us a letter inviting us out to go fishing together and catch the big one, whatever that means. We spend the morning feeding our chickens and giving Gwen a cabbage. There's more furniture to buy, so we spend some more money on that. And then we head down to the beach for some more successful clam farming. Our windmill has been finished on day 141. We say hello to all the barn animals, give Gwen yet another cabbage, and then purchase some more chicken fodder because I want it to be at 100. Yeah, strawberries are ripe. We collect our first batch of strawberries and give one to Eve. We finish off the day by depositing a flower in the blue bin for tomorrow's flower festival. It's day 142 and you guessed it, we're watering crops, feeding chickens, and taking care of our large animals. We harvest some breadfruits and potatoes and sell those bad boys off before getting a stamina replenishment. I decided I didn't need to go to the flower festival even though I put a flower in there since I already had the note for it, so I just spent the evening hanging out in the mines searching for more moonstones. We wake up to a letter from the junk shop on day 143. We finally sold enough moonstones to get the upgrade. I also realized that Gwen is up to max affection now, which is awesome. We water our crops and get another stamina boost since we spent all night in the mines, and then spend the afternoon in the mountains looking for herbs to supplement our sleepy little boy. We take care of the chickens and large animals and make a whole lot of money spelling special yarn. Dia gets a plump strawberries gift, and then we run up to the second floor of the junk shop to get a cutscene where we learn that Lewis has finally moved into the village and will work with Anne at the junk shop. We sell off some herbs in the hopes that Basil comes back to town and spend the entire night harvesting, storing, selling, replanting, and collecting crops all the way up to 6 a.m. the next day. Our wish came true on day 144 as Basil has finally returned to Flowerbud Village, 
and we waste no time befriending him by giving him a strawberry. Then we're off to water some crops down by the riverland, feed all the chickens, and cuddle the monkey in the mountain. We finish out the day by collecting and selling some breadfruits. Eve has some fizzy soda pop for us the morning of day 145. We do our customary watering of crops and animal feeding before giving Alex a turnip, and we finish a very quick day by selling off the leftover strawberries. We're back in the field on day 146 watering and weeding our crop plots. We give our large animals a nice brushing and then head over to Woody's store to purchase a whole bunch of furniture. We pet a cuckoo by the lake and then give Dan a clam to start working on his affection. We spend the rest of the evening running around the mountains looking for herbs, flowers, honey, and very berries. We start day 147 with Dia gifting us a chocolate cake, which looks very delicious. Then we're off to the chicken coop to feed our birds and head over to the barn and get some wool. Our strawberries need harvesting, so we get our hands dirty. Then it's off to the town square to the cow festival. We enter Lem for judging and surprise, surprise, we're the winner, baby. Not only do we get a, quote, year's supply, end quote, of fodder, but we also get a music note, the moo note. My Twitch chat informed me that we can have five chickens, so I put another egg in the incubator on day 148. We said hello to all the barn animals and then went and bought everything from Woody's furniture store. I was convinced that it was time to finally impregnate Lem, so we purchased a cow miracle potion. Of course, we had to give Martha some yarn, before giving Lem the miracle potion we bought to finish the day. Day 149 in the final day of spring begins with some weeding on the ranch before collecting our last crop of breadfruits for the season. We spend the evening collecting and selling off all the remaining strawberries and giving Jamie one of them because, you know, why not? I thought it was a good idea to show you guys an update of where we are on day 150. For cows, Lem is maxed out on affection pregnant, and a cow festival champion. And Fidget Spin is at two hearts. For sheep, Cactus is maxed out, and Sharpie and Lego left parentheses all cap, right parentheses, are at seven and two hearts respectively. In the chicken coop, of course, Ragu and Modestru are maxed out, while Luna and Pickle are so close to 10 out of 10 hearts as well. Kuze is our only horse, and she is maxed out on affection and still has a crown even though she lost the most recent horse race. Since it's the first day of summer, we're buying some crop seeds over at Liz's store. We then clear out all the old dead plants and sow in the seeds of our recently purchased corn and tomatoes. Of course, we have to do the exact same thing at the main house, and we finish the day by planting some onions and cacao seeds. Day 151 is a very special day. Of course, it begins with our typical crop watering, chicken chasing, and sheep brushing. We spend some time in the mines before revealing which bachelorette has finally won the vote. With 21.69% of the vote, Gwen is the chosen bachelorette. Gwen's the winner! Gwen's the winner! We collect our blue feather, run over to Woody's workshop, go upstairs, and present Gwen with the feather. Of course, she accepts, and that's about it. She doesn't say anything special. There's no, you know, crazy dialogue after you give it to her. That's just it. And we end the day. Day 152 is the beach festival. We spend the morning watering our crops, collecting an orange from our tree, and taking care of the chickens and barn animals. We head on down to the beach and barely miss out on consecutive first places as Jamie wins this time around. We pick right back up with the excitement on day 153 as it's our wedding day. Everybody that decided to, you know, show up to our wedding looks super happy for us as we look super dapper in our backwards wedding hat. We seal our union with a kiss and let everyone congratulate us as we walk on back. Of course, we get a music note for our marriage, the wedding day note. Gwen then asks us what she should call us, and we select our first name because that's what I'm comfortable with. And then she says that's suddenly embarrassing, <laughs> even though she's been calling us that since we met her. We say hello to the barn animals and then give Lila a flower. Our onions are ready for harvest, so we spend the afternoon collecting all of those and then selling off the extras that we can't store in our fridge. We deviate from the excitement on day 154 with more crop watering and chicken cuddling before we head on down to the kitchen to dye some yarn. This time we get some red yarn and give it to Henry since he loves that stuff. We might as well get a stamina refresh while we're all the way up here, and we spend the evening in the mines looking for pontata roots and doing some fishing. 
We begin day 155 in the chicken coop as our final chicken friend has finally been hatched. We decide to name her Sky. Ronald has sent us a letter this morning saying that the Paradise Orchard has finally been built. So we head on over there and see that Dan has taken up a job. I try to put another egg in the incubator to no avail. And then we give Lila another flower. We spend the afternoon trying to fish for some trash to get yet another music note, the rubber boots note. Since we're cohabitating now, we decide to buy the baby toys, if you know what I mean. We haven't whacked a mole in a while, so we go ahead and finish the day by doing that after missing more times than I'm proud to admit. Looks like Gwen got locked out of the house on day 156 as she's at our door and asked to meet up for the festival today. She could have just told us, you know, when we got out of bed, but of course we say yes and get on to our farming tasks like, you know, watering. We then head on down to the beach and farm for clams before going super sane on some rocks in the mountain. That evening, we meet up with Gwen down at the square and put some biodegradable bamboo down the river. Shout out to all the commenters in the last video for letting me know that bamboo is biodegradable. Gina sent us a letter on day 157, giving us some tips on how to stay healthy in the summer heat. A rainy day means no watering for us, so we feed the chickens and the large animals before reordering some onion seeds and planting them in the big house fields. Of course, we need to make some more yarn and give Ronald some gifts, and then is back up to the mountains to do some more rock crushing. There's no rain on day 158, so we're back to watering crops by hand. And then when we finish that, it's off to feeding the cows and the sheep. Dan gets a clam and Henry gets some colored yarn, and we finish the day by collecting a whole bunch of tomatoes. On day 159, Anne is still sending us letters, even though she was at our wedding. Nevertheless, we have crops to water, tomatoes to give to Nami, and a special yarn to give to Henry. There's a mole in need of some whacking and money that needs to be made, as we sell off a whole bunch of corn to end the day. Day 116, this game doesn't have water sprinklers, so we get a workout just watering crops. We say hello to all of our animals, then make some baked corn in the mountains and give it to Henry since I know he loves this stuff. The goddess gives us some stamina, and we use it to commit a crime against nature as we attempt to smack a mole. I give a raccoon a hug and a cuddle, and then end the evening by selling off a bunch of onions. It's day 161, and Reginald and Kevin get a pet as we check the calendar. This last pet got Reginald up to 10 hearts, so that's great for us, but not too great for him as I don't think he'll get too many pets now. We make the corn and tomato plants nice and moist with our watering can, then pet the duck. Lego, left parentheses, all cap, right parentheses, is finally old enough to shear, so we get our first wool from her and then head on down to the beach to get a clam, which we give to Dan. This rock has been annoying me, so I pulverize it, then give Ray a piece of corn before spending the evening collecting a whole bunch of corn and selling it to the highest bidder. Nami sends us a letter on day 162 confirming that A Wonderful Life, Friends of Mineral Town, and Magical Melody all exist in the same universe. But this one doesn't have sprites that water your crops, so I guess we just have to do it ourselves. We feed the chickens and decide it's finally time to upgrade our hoe. Oh brother, this guy stinks! We spend the evening crushing rocks in the mountains, since they've been an eyesore for far too long. We're whipping up some tomato juice in the kitchen on day 163, along with some sunny side up eggs. Basil loves tomato juice, so we give him some before giving some love to our animals. This mold won't go away, so we whack it again and then make some orange juice in the evening before bed. Lem has finally given birth on day 164. I promised one of my top Twitch tippers that I would name the calf after him, so Benny shall be her name. It's back into the fields to do some watering in the scorching hot summer sun before we give Benny her first meal. I forgot to put a moonstone in the blue shipping bin, so there won't be a festival today. Instead, we just sell some cacao before bedtime. Day 165 goes a little bit like this. Water crops, feed chickens, pluck some weeds, give out some gifts, get Katie up to 10 hearts, whack a mole, and bribe a bartender with some butter. What exactly I'm bribing him for, I don't know, but you know, it's, you know, just, well, it's a bribe. I accidentally left a dollar in my hand. Keep it. Why? I think you know why. Nina is at our door the morning of day 166 and gives us some gratin, I think. I don't actually know what gratin is, but I mean, it looks good to me. Chickens need feed, so we do that and I can't neglect my cows. I harvest some tomatoes and make some juice, purchase a horse miracle potion, because why not, then give some juice to Kurt. I finish this day by doing some unsuccessful clam farming down by the beach. Dan gives us some apple soda and does a little dance for us on day 167. We also get a music note 
the master pickup artist note. Gwen decided to send us a letter encouraging us to do our best. I mean, again, she could have just talked to us, but I guess this works too. Following her advice, we get into the fields and do some watering. I use the miracle potion on Kuze, and we get our second note of the day, the Animal Kingdom note. I've been stockpiling money for a good while now, so we head over to Woody's and purchase one Woodsman's Forest, one Mountain Echo Forest, one River Song Heights, one Four Flower Bud, one Flower Bud Riverside, two Flower Bud Riverside, three River Song Heights, and four Sea Breeze. We now own 18 of the 20 possible parcels of land. I also purchase 140 units of lumber. Ronald loves special milk, so we give him some of that before getting stuck behind these two-man mountains. Just get out of the way! After whacking the mole for the 10th and final time, we're rewarded with the aptly named Mole Whacking Note. We finish the day crushing some more rocks in the mountains. On day 168, I wake up and realize I didn't get the poor note after spending all that money. My calculations were off, so I need to spend another 220 G. However, Basil decides that I need some limestone and another music note, the Traveler note. Luckily, I checked the TV today to see what the weather is going to be like tomorrow, and there's going to be a typhoon. So we water all of our crops, purchase some wood to protect our house from the wind, and definitely not to, you know, get our money down to 100 G or anything like that. It's, it's definitely to, you know, batten down the hatches. We fill up the feed slots in the coop and the barn and give Nita some tomato juice so she has some nourishment for the impending cataclysm. Henry also needs some baked corn because I don't trust him to feed himself. I finish the day by collecting some cacao for myself in Gwen's stockpile. We wake up on day 169 with a music note. Of course, the poor note. It's just, you know, it's coincidental. I mean, it's not because I ordered a bunch of lumber for no reason, you know. We spend all of our time inside during the typhoon by mixing up some tomato juice and apple juice and making a whole bunch of sunny side up eggs. Lila is at our door on day 170 with a gift of cake. Maybe she's happy that we all survived. Right on point, Joe sends us a letter mentioning how great business is after typhoons. That's kind of a tone deaf thing to say, but you know, get your bag, dog. Of course, we need to assess the damage from the typhoon. Most of our crops are left unscathed, but the ones that have survived need a nice watering. We make sure all of our chickens and large animals survive through the storm, and we spend some time picking out all the weeds on the ranch. We stumble upon a whole bunch of villagers just hanging out in the library, so we give Lewis a sunny side up egg and head on down to the bar which is closed? What kind of bar closes once a week? We wake up to a letter from Joe on day 171 gushing about his little crush. Also, the orchard has finally been upgraded. We collect a bunch of cacao crops and sell them off before heading down to the new orchard and being introduced to Meryl, who doesn't seem to like us all too much. After talking to her once, we were rewarded with one of the hardest notes to get in the game, the hustle and bustle note for having 35 villagers moved into the village. I accidentally eat a special egg, but I get some special milk to make up for my mistake, which we give directly to Carl. Meryl likes good mayonnaise, so we give her one of those before finishing the day by cooking some corn on the beach with Henry. Day 172 begins with one of our wild animal friends showing up, a cat. We water our corn crops and get some wool from both Sharpie and Cactus, then head down to the beach and farm for some clams. Jamie loves cake, so we give her or them or him one. I don't know what Jamie's pronouns are. These, they are pretty ambiguous, so you know, it's just Jamie. We spend the evening of day 172 collecting oranges down by Ty's shop. Some very loud knocks wake us up on day 173 and apparently Gwen has collapsed. Turns out everything's fine. Gwen's just pregnant. You heard right, we have canonically had sex. Had to describe the feeling, it was the best. We get rewarded for our procreation with a music note, the stork note. We spend the festival day watering the crops, checking up on the barn animals, and feeding weeds to a squirrel. Some corn is ready for harvest, so we pick it off and sell it. I decide to get my ax out and clear off some trees from our new land since I have some plans for it. We run down over to the beach and watch the fireworks with Anne? Our wife just got a positive pregnancy test and collapsed, but we're watching the fireworks with Anne. Are we the baddies? Day 174 begins in the chicken coop, but it might as well be the doghouse, if you know what I mean. We take care of the animals and water our river house crops. We give a little cuddle to the sparrow and duck down by the bridge, then head on over to the mine to look for some good clay. 
It seems like a cave party is going on. So we give out some gifts to Basil, Kurt, and Saibara. We spend the evening picking off the corn that is ready for harvest and storing it for gifts. Day 175 picks up in the same plot that we left off on, but we're watering it this time. We say hello to the birds, the ones outside and inside, before giving a brush to our cows. We give some special milk to a special boy, which gets Carl up to max affection. We ran out of fodder, so I had to make sure to get 100 because, you know, it's a, it's a 100. I, I, like the, I like the even numbers. Then we finish the day by collecting some cacao for future gifts. We're back in the fields on day 176 doing our typical watering. We sell off some extra cacao plants, take care of the chickens and large animals, and then check the TV for the weather since we haven't had rain in God knows how long. Anyways, we spend the rest of the afternoon digging for good clay, which we give to Saibara before finishing the evening by making some money. The morning of day 177 is spent watering, chickening, and brushing before petting a cat, accidentally dropping some juice that I meant to give to Nina, scrambling to pick it up before it disappears, then successfully giving it to Nina. We give Eve a special piece of cheese, which got her all the way up to max affection, and then spent the evening making money. It's day 178, and we're watering crops. We're feeding chickens. We're feeding cows. And we're chopping the wood and pulling up weeds on our new land. We head on down to the sheep festival and realize Lego left parentheses all cap right parentheses is the only sheep that has wool. So that's the only one we can enter. And of course, we lose to Jamie. So that's fun. I now have another reason to do another 100 days of this video because I need to get that note. On day 179, the final day of summer, we get out the sickle, check the weather channel, collect our final crop of cacao and sell it off. We then start cutting down all the stalks of the soon to be dead plants and this session gets us over the line to get the copper sickle upgrade. And right on cue, Cactus and Sharpie have grown their wool the day after we need it. So I cut it off and I'm very angry, but you know, we make sure that they're okay. We collect the final tomatoes, cut them off, collect the final ears of corn and then cut them off and then give Nami the last tomato of the season. Day 180 and the first day of fall begins by checking out the event calendar. We give Basil some tomato juice and read the letters we receive from Maria and Duke. Animals need to be fed and fall crops need to be purchased. Of course, we sow those super fast and get them moist before being interrupted by Theodore as Meryl and Tim have run off. We run out to the mountain looking for them and the harvest sprites say that they saw them by the lake. They're being attacked by Jamie's dog and we run in and scare him away. The kiddos are finally safe and they leave with their parents, but it seems like their adventure wasn't all bad. Our hierarchs are rewarded with a music note, the lost child note. We also get a neat cutscene with Henry and Maria, where he's just doing some painting down by the lake and we watch them from afar. This isn't creepy at all. On day 181, we chat to Gwen and she says some weird nonsense. It'll be nice as we grow and get so we can talk about anything. You, you could do so, you, you do, you could, you, you want, you want. We check our mailbox and Kurt is feeling some type of way. And so is Lewis. Of course, we have to water our crops, feed the chickens, feed ourselves using the chickens, make some special cheese, give Martha some cacao, and then spend some time in the mines looking for more clay. I completely forgot to buy carrots. So we buy those seeds and then some more fertilizer. I prepare the new land for our recently purchased carrot seeds, fertilize the soil, and then sow them. We need more energy, so it's off to the goddess pond, and we spend the evening running around the mountains looking for rocks and flowers. Kuze has finally given birth on day 183. We decided to name the foal Autumn, which I think fits pretty well. We spend the morning creating a fence around our new carrot farm and then watering our eggplants. The chickens need to be fed, and Tim needs some corn. And that's about it for today. Lila is sending us a letter on day 184, even though she knows my wife is pregnant. She belongs to the streets. We gotta be healthy, so we harvest our spinach and then head on down to the barn and get some milk. We feed our chickens, then head over to the kitchen to make some tomato juice and boiled spinach. We cuddle a rabbit down by the mountains and feed him a weed before finishing our evening by collecting our first grape. We're watering pumpkins on day 185. We got chickens to feed, milk to sell, and colored yarn to make in the afternoon. Basil gets some tomato juice and Gina gets a newly harvested bell pepper before we spend the rest of our evening harvesting our first batch of fall crops, then selling the leftovers. We start day 186 by doing some weed pulling, then watering all the crops. 
Our fruit trees have delivered us a grape and an apple, which is pretty neat. We check the event calendar, sow some more seeds, and water those. We have a couple of special eggs ready today, which is nice. They're great for gifts. We trim cactus and accidentally down some special milk. It's delicious though, so no big deal for me. We head down to the hospital and give Gina a bell pepper and Alex some boiled spinach before finishing the day harvesting our carrots and selling some leftovers. Day 187 and Ray is in our inbox as he's crushing on someone and wanting to let us know. We water some pumpkins, collect some chicken eggs, then head down to the mines and get some good clay, which we give to Saibara. We spend the evening collecting our bell peppers, eggplants, and yams, and then selling the extras. It's day 188 and we're watering again. We're chicken chasing. We're cowing, if that's a word. And checking the weather since we still haven't had any rain. We do a little bit of pumpkin farming, pumpkin selling, and digging in the mines before heading over to the town square. We meet up with Gwen and head over to the viewing balcony where there's a lovely full moon to kiss under. It's day 189 and there's still no rain, so that's fun for us. We gotta water plants ourselves. Henry gets his daily carrot and Basil gets his tomato juice. Two very healthy men here. I wanted a real year's worth of fodder, so I ordered 957 units of it and 566 units of chicken food. That way we won't run out for a very long time. The carrot that we gifted to Henry got us up to six hearts. So we go ahead and finish the day by purchasing the painting and a whole bunch of other furniture from Lila's shop. Day 190 and we're back on the river plot watering some eggplants. Liz loves yams, so we give her one of those before feeding the chickens and the large animals. We've been neglecting Jamie, so they get some special cheese. We spend the evening harvesting a whole bunch of carrots and then selling them off for some easy money. We spend day 191 doing some light weeding before collecting a grape, selling off some carrots, making some mayonnaise, and then giving Jamie a gift. We give Gina a bell pepper and Alex some boiled spinach, which gets both of them up to max affection. We head over to Liz's store to buy some Mora tree saplings, plant one, clean up the weeds, and then plant the other. There's still no rain on day 192, and I'm getting sick of it. And it doesn't help that the Blue Sky Ranch sends us a letter rubbing it in our face that we didn't win the sheep festival. Thanks a lot, Hank. You're the best, man. We spend the afternoon watering eggplants, collecting some eggplants, feeding and cuddling some chickens, and giving Tim a gold ore, which gets him up to max affection. We spend the evening fencing off our new plots of land and then going through the mountains looking for more rocks until we finish the fence. We start day 193 with giving Jamie some special cheese and then watering some yams. We feed the chickens and trim the sheep before purchasing a whole bunch of seeds from Liz's store. Ray gets a special egg and we spend the evening sowing and watering all those seeds we just purchased. We pick up on day 194, right where we left off, watering crops. We feed the chickens and feed Ty some spinach since he's a healthy boy and he loves it. We collect a whole bunch of eggplants and bell peppers, which are sold to finish up the day. Watering, fruit collecting, chicken chasing, and gift giving highlights day 195. And we finish the day off by digging up a whole bunch of good clay and selling it. Day 196 is a festival day, and we're watering, feeding, harvesting, and selling crops before heading over to the town square and entering Kuze in the fall horse race. We start the race off by getting a quick onion boost and pushing in front of Blue. We use Blue's horse to push Kuze into a carrot speed boost, and then use Gwen, our wife's own horse, to push into two Pontata root boosts, which give us enough stamina to push Kuze into even more stamina boosts that get us across the line in first place. And that's it for day 196. There's really not much else that happens. Lewis sends us a letter on day 197, letting us know how much he loves fall. We use our brand spanking new TV that we are gifted for winning the horse festival to check the weather. And you guessed it, still no rain. So out we go to the fields to water the crops. We head over to Saibara's shop and he has a predicament. He hurt his back. So he needs us to go let the mayor know that his order is ready. We head over to the mayor's house and inform him of this development and then head back over to Saibara's where he rewards us for our effort with the aging pot. We feed our chickens and large animals, then head over to Woody's workshop, where he gives us a recipe for pickled turnips. We gift Liz a yam, collect some clay, and then spend the evening collecting all our crops and selling them off for some decent money. Day 198 in, you know, still no rain, so we're watering crops again. We head on over to Ty's workshop, and he gives us a recipe for grass juice. We take care of the chickens, feed the calves, give Nina a baked chestnut, 
and give her mom a yam. We pet a monkey and collect an orange herb before heading down to the cave to till for some pantata roots to give to Basil. Guess what? There's not going to be any rain tomorrow either, so that's fun. We finished the day by selling off a whole bunch of crops with almost zero stamina remaining. It's been a busy day. Day 199, the penultimate day of this video, begins with a squirrel friend waking us up. We water the crops, check the calendar, give Woody an eggplant, feed the chickens, say hello to the barn animals, and then harvest some crops that are ripe at the river farm. We saw off those bad boys, and then hit the hay. I decided that I'd show you guys what a typical day looks like on day 200. We start the day by saying hello to Gwen and picking up Kevin. We must clear the farm of all weeds and water the two pumpkins that aren't fully grown. We then head over to the river farm and water all those plants over there. We then give Saibara an eggplant since he loves those, take care of the chickens, talk to, feed, and brush the animals, milk the cows, shear the sheep, and then get out all our gifts from the fridge. Doug gets a bell pepper, Liz gets a yam, and it's also her birthday, so that's nice. We cuddle the squirrel, give Woody an eggplant, cuddle the rabbit, and give Meryl a good mayonnaise. Duke gets some butter, we cuddle the sparrow, give Lila a pumpkin, Louis a sunny side up egg, Basil a pantata root, Henry gets a carrot, and Ray gets a special egg. Ronald also gets a special egg, and then we spend the evening collecting eggplants and bell peppers. We store all the eggplants that our fridge can hold, and then sell the rest. We collect the remaining pumpkins and store what we can in the fridge, create our rings for truffle farming, and then sell off the remaining pumpkins that won't fit in the fridge. So here we are at 200 days. We have 94 music notes and we're only missing some child-centric notes, some animal festival notes, and the artist note until we can get the meek heart note. We sold at least one of every crop, but it looks like we're missing two from this section. Leave a comment if you want to let me know what they are. We caught all the fish in the last video, but we did finish the food list, and there are still a lot of other items we need to ship. Out of our cows, Lemon Fidget Spin are at max affection, with Benny at 6 out of 10 hearts. All our sheep are at max affection, and all of our chickens, bar Sky, are at 10 out of 10 hearts. Of course, Kuze is at 10, and Autumn is at 3 hearts. Reginald is at 10 hearts, and Kevin is at 8. We also own 18 out of the 20 possible land parcels. 13 villagers are at max affection, with a whole bunch of them getting super close to max. I'm not too worried about getting max affection on the wild animals, but here they are anyways. We have a gold watering can, hammer and hoe, the silver fishing rod, and the copper axe and copper sickle. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching my video. I'm streaming Magical Melody right now, recording for the next 100 days. Come by and check it out at twitch.tv slash jackduckgoose. You might even make it into the next video. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and enable notifications if you want to see more content like this. If you want to get more involved in my community, make sure to follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, and join my Discord server. It's full of awesome, amazing people that always like to have a good time, and I'm sure they'd love to have you. Thanks again, and I'll see all of you very soon.